Welcome back to Think Tech. Talking tax today, talking tax with Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We're going to talk about keeping cool in the schools and how, how good a job, or maybe not, we've done about that. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay. We're going to talk today about uh, cool in the schools and uh, how not to do it. Well, I remember David Ige was uh, responding to, uh, I guess it was a sort of a, um, a community uh, request that the schools be cooler. Uh, and my first reaction was, um, you know, we have an architecture show, and a number of architects have pointed out that Hawaii's best architecture is open architecture, where, where the, um, the trade winds come through and cool things that way. This is the best thing that we have, that we've done. But now we're going to, I guess, close up the, uh, under this program, we're going to close up the, uh, the classrooms and, and put air conditioners everywhere um, and not really do much in order to deal with the aging infrastructure of the schools. And he spent well, a know, lot of the, money. Can, can you talk about the money he spent for that? Well, I mean, open open. Architecture is, you know, fine and all that when there are trade winds blowing, but uh, the trade winds don't blow all the time. Sometimes we do have rain, and sometimes we got corner winds. So uh, th things work sometimes, but not, all, but not all the time. And you know, we want kids to be, you know, in classrooms that you know and reasonably comfortable and not sweltering. Now, okay, uh, well, I, I never said we agree on everything, Tom. No? All right. Um but the I guess the um what 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 you did point out and and I think what we can work and start is uh this issue was focused on a lot by you know the prior administration governor Ige. Um in 2016 under his um I I I would say leadership I suppose uh, the legislature appropriated a hundred million dollars uh, toward heat abatement upgrades, and in in twenty twenty two, another ten million dollars went there. Um, and you know, people in the uh, people in the communities were willing to help too. You know, uh, there were businesses and and people that were willing to contribute. They said, air okay, conditioners. Yeah. They, they, they wanted to contribute air conditioners. Uh, can I comment on that for a moment? I, I sat on the neighborhood board for a few years, and uh, they would come to us every year and say, you know, the schools don't have enough pencils and pens. Could you people in the neighborhood board, could you contribute your spare pencils and pens to the schools? And my God, you know, the DOE has the largest budget in the state. It's getting hundreds of millions to fund education, and they're coming to a, you know, a, a dozen people on the neighborhood board for pens and pens. Um, and I suppose when you go out and say, can you give us your, your tired, uh, your huddled air conditioner units um, and help us put them in the schools, there's an absurdity about that. Uh, what kind is it? What make? What model? How old? Does it work? Does it not work? Uh, what kind of um, electrical requirements does it have? So these guys, uh, you well, know, well, you see, there's there's the thing, uh, because when people volunteered to give air conditioners to the schools, um, the response was, "We can't take them," because uh, the uh, the school's electrical capacity. Um, you know, you you plug one one or one or two of those things in, circuit breakers trip, fuses so you, blow. You think that good planning would require a statement of the specifications of the air conditioners, or or a, um, a you know a, a, an analysis of that? I guess they didn't make that analysis. Well, I mean, once they once they started putting them in, they kind of figured out the problem, uh, and the problem is that the that, that the circuits for you know, schools built fifty or hundred years ago uh, wouldn't you know couldn't handle uh, the enhanced load. So, uh, classroom you know the classroom circuit breakers tripped out. Uh, sometimes the, the circuit breaker that tripped out was for the entire wing of a building, 
So they said, oh, please don't donate air, air conditioners because the school doesn't have the capacity for it. Okay. Well, so far, that's a, what, what do you want to call it, a stumble point in that initiative. So, uh, but, but, the, but the geniuses at our, our Department of Education facilities folks, uh, they figured out a way around it. And you know what that was? I'm all game. Yes, what? Solar powered air conditioners. Mm. So they put in uh, a bunch of solar powered air conditioners, uh, and uh, they started running those at a, at a cost of one hundred twenty two million dollars. Yeah, that's that's way more than just the you know ordinary air conditioners. Um, which you connect up to your electrical circuit. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, ordinary air conditioners cost maybe $2,000 a classroom. Uh, these solar-powered jobs cost $138,000 per classroom. Hmm, so, you know, so I, I, I know that if you and I were in the business, Tom, we could do it cheaper. I know that. Oh, but that's not the half of it. Because solar powered air conditioners are designed to operate for like maybe four and a half hours. The school day is eight hours plus. So around midday, guess what happened? No more air conditioning. And and the afternoon is hot. And the afternoon is hot. <laughs> the afternoon is very hot. So um There was uh, some problem with that solution, as you uh, can in, see. Indeed. So what happened? I mean, they found out that you can't do that or that it would be too much. And did they start putting solar on the, um, you know, the roofs of these uh, dated school buildings? Yes. I, as I mentioned, they spent $122 million on it. They, they, they actually wired spent up. the money. They spent... Uh, enough money to wire uh, 800 and something classrooms with these solar air conditioners. And where in the process did they find out it was a bad idea? You know, that is the most mystifying thing about it, because if, if they installed maybe one or two and found out that it didn't work, uh, they could have kind of, you know, put the brakes on the plan right there. But no! Uh, they went through the you know entire process. They bought the hundred and twenty two million dollars, wired up eight hundred eight hundred and so uh, classrooms, and found out the the plan didn't work. Let me let me do the math here. Um, they, so the legislature gave them a uh, hundred million dollars in in the first tranche, and then ten million dollars in the second one. But your number of $122 million, I'll go on record about this, is more than $110 million. Did I get that right? Yeah, of course. So there, there, there are other facilities funds that they tapped as well. Hmm. Okay. So let me, let me now tell you how they fixed the problem. Mm -hmm. Because at, the, at that point, um, some other real geniuses from the facilities branch got involved. Uh, the schools were, uh, you know, had old old fixtures, right, including lighting fixtures. They had incandescent bulbs. So, um, you you know these days that you can't even find incandescent bulbs in the uh, in the stores anymore, because you can pick up uh, an LED bulb, and I, I have one. I have one right here. We'll take your uh, word for it, Tom. Huh? It's a 100-watt bulb, so it puts out a 100-watt equivalent, but it takes 15 watts. Mm -hmm. So it's, it saves 85% of the energy that otherwise would go to lighting. And provides the same lighting or better than before. Right. So what the schools did was they swapped out their, their lighting fixtures. Um... 
they could plug in the air conditioners. And they worked. But what about lighting? The lighting the lighting is fine. They they have LED bulbs and they have they have light that's as good as or better than before. Okay. Was it doesn't sound like there's a downside except the cost of swapping out the bulbs. Yeah. Um but with you know the swapping out of those light fixtures. You mean the fixture or the bulb? I'm sorry, the, the bulbs. The energy consumption from the lights went way down, thereby freeing up the capacity uh, in the aging wires so they could accommodate the air conditioners. Got it. So, so they so they took the solar powered air conditioners, they disconnected them from the solar, they plugged them into the wall, and they worked. Problem solved. Mm. Well, the, the problem that wasn't solved is the $122 million. That had already been spent. Mm. So there's all this uh, solar equipment on the uh, on the top of the schools that really isn't doing anything now. Because the air conditioners are getting their power from the regular power system, the non-solar power system, right? That's right. They're, they're, they're plugged into the wall. They well, get the power from the, the regular back, grid. Send it back. Send all the solar cells back. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think they wish they could. <laughs> so how, how many schools, are, you know, were involved in $122 million of solar? 880 classrooms. 880 classrooms. Is that everything? I'm not really sure what you mean by everything, but... Every school, every classroom? No, no, no. No, we, we have, you know, uh, quite a number of uh, schools and classrooms statewide. Mm -hmm. But Eternity was a big dent in it. So now, I get this right, um, the, the solar equipment is sitting on the roofs of 800 schools doing nothing. Uh, 800, 880 classrooms. Uh, I don't know how many schools that is, but it is doing nothing. Got it. Well, that is, has that been in the newspaper? Because that's really scandalous. Yeah. Um, it, it did break on Hawaii News. Now Rick Dasog broke the story. He's been following it for some time. Um, so Rick Dasog. Uh, has been a reporter at Hawaii News now for some time. Unfortunately, he's leaving that part of the industry. He's going to join the governor's office in, in, in his policy team. He's an excellent reporter. It's oh, a yeah. loss. Yeah. Well, a loss, a loss there, but I think uh, uh, it would be a, a good asset to the governor's policy team. Mm, I agree. Yeah. So th there are a lot of questions that I think need to be asked uh, in this debacle. Um, the, the well, let's, ask, being, let's ask them, yeah, again. What yeah. are they? The, the big one is, why didn't they test their damn plans before before rolling it out to 880 classrooms and spending $122 million? Um, I doubt there's an answer to that. I mean, when, when, um, uh, when the question was put to one of the... Uh, Assistant superintendents, um, his his answer was, "Oh, we got schooled on that because classrooms operate more than four and a half hours." I guess they didn't know. I mean, wouldn't wouldn't there have been technical specs on the on the solar powered air conditioners that say, "Oh, these are designed to run for four and a half hours." You know, it sounds like this was done by people who were not qualified to make those decisions or who were not motivated to make them, even identify them. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't hear the sound of engineers, for example. I don't hear the sound of um, electrical people weighing in on it. I'm, I'm not sure that um, the solar people weighed in on it. They just uh, 
they were happy to have the contract. Well, we need people who can read the damn specs. That too. And by the way, I know you're not going to completely uh, agree with me, but they probably didn't talk to architects either. I, I have no idea if they did or not. I mean, if if they did, I, I, I would imagine that, that somebody would have figured out that this was like going to be a colossal failure. So where are we now? Um, I mean, I certainly agree. Um, it has been a colossal failure. It was um, query whether it was a good idea to start with, but um, let's assume there was value in the idea, at least in keeping the kids cooler because they study better and listen to teachers better and so forth. Um, but uh, and 120 yeah. million would have bought you know would have bought a whole bunch of pencils. <laughs> so wh where are we now? So the air conditioners are working. The solar is vestigial. Um, and uh, what's the plan? Now, is, is the initiative done? Is it finished? Where are we going from here except to lick our wounds? Well, um, the DOE has deployed a new program. Um, and uh, what, they, what they say is that they have a new process designed to more quickly deploy air conditioning units in buildings that can accommodate the increased energy use. So it's up to the school uh, to get an electrical assessment from the facilities folks, which uh, will use no additional money because it's already paid for by uh, state and federal funds. And then the school will have a range of options to move forward. So um, so they're, they're trying to kick it back to the schools uh, and and kind of like cover up the fact that 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 the central facilities administration just majorly screwed this up. Well, okay, they should be criticized for it. Maybe heads should roll even. But the, you know, the the larger question is that how are we managing education in this state? You know, not to say that she was right or wrong, but Linda Lingle's initial um, platform position was. We should put the schools out in the counties like in most other states. Um, that didn't happen. Um, and now we continue to run the schools through an enormous bureaucracy that costs, as I mentioned, uh, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars, you know, hundreds of millions. No, it's, it's huge. I forget the exact number, but the budget of the schools is huge. I think, it's, I think it is over a billion dollars. Over a billion dollars. It's the largest single item in the state budget, um, <clears throat> what are we? <clears throat> are we doing a good job in managing education K through twelve? Um, are we mm, screwing up other parts of the educational system and overspending for them? Are we handling the teacher issues and the book issues and the, the computer issues and the maintenance issues the way we should? Is there enough money there? Um, you know, well, I mean, be before you talk about money, you got to talk about basic competence. I mean, you, you you can throw a whole bunch of money at at whatever problem, but if you know the the person on the other end doesn't know what to do with that money, uh, then nothing's going to happen, as we see here. Well, I, I hear what you're saying. There's a connection, and that is, if they can't manage what appears to be a a relatively simple program. Um, how how are they managing the more sophisticated ones? All the other ones where Hawaii needs to catch up. Um, you know how are we doing? How how are the grade points for the kids doing? Uh, how are they doing on national scores? How are they doing in the marketplace? Do, can they tell you um, you know who the vice president is? All that stuff, civic civic um, education, which is so important. Um, I, I suspect that the answer is uh, it, that on the educational level and on the other aspects of the facilities level, DOE is not doing very well. Yeah, I mean, there have been studies um, on, on, on some of these things. I mean, we at the foundation have been writing about some other aspects, um, like, uh, you know, a lot of resources went toward uh, mental health. Uh, you remember the Felix consent decree mm. from, from some years back? Um, 
one of the things that we've written about before uh, is that there's some federal money to be pulled down uh, for, uh, you know, giving uh, students the mental health support that they need. They just need to, you know, submit, um, you know, certain information to the feds and then they can pull down a bunch of money. And we haven't been doing that. Uh, so, you know, my point is, well, look, how much does it cost to hire a couple of coders, you know, who can, who can, um, you know, get the medical records into the shape that the feds can understand uh, and, sub and submit those so we can actually get some money for this uh, that we don't, you know, that, that we taxpayers in Hawaii don't directly have to pay for. And uh, so far, nobody's, nobody's given me an answer for that. Well, let me just throw a question at you. You said mental health? Mental health, yeah. Is mental health uh, an obligation of the Department of Education? We have a health department with well over 3,000 employees who yeah, it's, go it's, out into the field, and they do lots of things, including, you know, family health, family social health. Isn't that where mental health should be handled? Well, actually, actually it's in both places because um, uh, if you're talking about students in the classroom, the yeah, DOE has some responsibility. Mm. So, so, so both departments do have uh, obligations to, to deal with the issue. But redundant, you will agree with me, redundancy is generally not efficient. Right. Okay, so, um, you know, who, who spots this? You know, I'm really happy that we're here together and the, the Tax Foundation of Hawaii looks at this and reports on this and expresses concern about it. But um, the auditor, is the auditor involved? Uh, are there committees in the legislature, like on education, a, a billion-dollar business in this state uh, who are involved? Um, who, who, who sets up the guardrails on waste? And waste. Well, the last time we talked um, about the auditor and the legislature, they were fighting each other. Mm. So, so um, I mean, it, it, it's it's unfortunate that you know we, the taxpayers, have to pay both sides of 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 you know of the people on the fight. And when they're fighting, they're not really producing anything that's that's usable for you know for us in the state of Hawaii. I mean, somebody should just kind of get in there and lay down the law and say, look, you know, you guys, you guys behave. Uh, otherwise, we'll take the sandbox away. Well, what about the governor? I mean, let's assume he's listening to this show. Let's assume he is aware one way or the other of what happened. I mean, Josh Green now. Uh, let's assume, you know, as a good mm, governor, he would look at what his predecessor did and to see if there's anything he ought to do to tune it up. What could he do? What should he do about this? Well, um, what I hope that he can or would do is make sure that the, that, that the people in our DOE who are dealing with this kind of issue are competent folks, and, and the ones who aren't uh, should be you know, given other jobs. Well, that, that's a problem if it's a civil service job. It's not like you can say, take a hike. Well, then, then we have to deal, do, do, deal with something about the civil service. I mean, we, we, we as taxpayers in Hawaii need, you need competent work by the, uh, by the people we do hire. I mean, it's not just, you know, putting any warm body into a, into a spot. They have to be able to do uh you know the, the 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 job that's that's asked of them what about the education committees in the legislature i mean somebody comes in front of them lord knows they deny enough requests for funding lord knows that some some of which arguably are very good and better than solar that doesn't do anything um but what about um the, the legislative committees they're there to examine um, they have staff, sometimes a lot of staff. Um, they're capable of doing research as much or better full-time 
as you and me, and, and somebody appears in front of them and says, uh, we need $110 million. How about it? Um, and they, and they, they, pay, they, they agree to that um, and query whether they should have dug a little deeper on this. Well, I, I think they certainly have that power. Um, the uh, the legislature, ha I mean, we have in the legislature several examples of of of, of recent uh, uh, clashes between the legislature and administration that uh, you know that the legislature won on. Uh, HTA being you know a, a very recent example of this Hawaii Tourism Authority. Um, the they are certainly capable of putting a lot of pressure uh, on on that point, so that the people who are there decide it's not worth for the, not worth it for them to stay there, and they get the heck out. And and hopefully that means somebody you know somebody else and somebody competent gets put in the job. Hmm. Yeah, but what what about actually you know researching these kinds of questions themselves? Um, uh, is the legislative legislature able to do that? I mean, if I'm a legislator, say I'm the chair of the education committee uh, in one house or the other, I say, wait a minute, you know, that's a lot of money. I want to be satisfied. I want a report. I want an engineer's analysis. Uh, I want an electrical analysis. Uh, I want an architectural analysis. Forgive me for mentioning that again. Uh, <clears throat> why can't why can't that person, that legislator, ask and get an answer? They do that in Congress, or at least they should. Well, they 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 do, but then then you have uh, an equal equal number of detractors saying, you know, we're just we're just going to study the issue. Come on, we need action. Yeah, the and, kids the kids are burning up with with temperature. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the kids are roasting in the meantime. Come on, <laughs> can't you be more compassionate than that? Yeah, and what's so complicated about our air conditioners anyway? <laughs> That's right. You know, you know, Tom. Uh, this is, uh, of course, this is the largest element in the state budget. But it strikes me that if we find this kind of what do you want to call it um, decision making problem in DOE, and it certainly lies in DOE. Um, what about other agencies? Is this uh, uh, kind of all across the board? Are there other agencies that operate in the same way where th they make a request for funding they really should not have made, uh, where, they, um, where the legislature gives them that money without really mm, delving into it, asking all the right questions? Is this something, is this a a phenomenon that exists in other agencies and other initiatives the same way? Uh, actually, no. Um, a lot of other agencies are, uh, I mean, and, and, and DOE to some extent, uh, is, is hidden by special funding. So you don't have the kind of scrutiny in the appropriations committees that, uh, that you would if, if it's a normally funded agency that if that's funded by general funds. Um, because in, in a special fund, uh, basically, it's up to the uh, department head to decide whether the money is consistent with the objectives of the special fund, and if and if it is, you know, it can you know the money can be spent. Well, that's the answer to the question. Then it doesn't go in front of the legislature because it's tucked away in a special fund, uh, a uh, a process you and I have talked about many times, and. Um, and the decisions about whether to spend it, how to spend it, um, the guardrails, if you will, there are no guardrails because the um, the executive in the agency can make those decisions with, without a, a whole lot of vetting or analysis. Um, and so the answer is, you know, you and I have actually been talking about this for a long time. We've been talking about um, management in state agencies, uh, which is spending money without making good decisions. I think yeah, that's so, what so, I so hear. Th that's right. There, there, there are two problems involved. Number one, you have an agency with a lot of special funds, which DOE has. Two, uh, the agency's too big. There are several layers of bureaucracy. Uh, you know, bureaucracy on top of bureaucracy, it's, it's um, then it goes up to a, an elected uh, an elected board, um, 
and decision decision by committees sometimes uh you know you have people under the committee that kind of really make all the uh, make all the decisions and just kind of get go to the go to the committee for a rubber stamp um you know you need to have clear delineated lines of responsibility and uh and when uh incompetence happens that's got to be corrected well it's easy to say it you know oh, yeah. um one uh, other big factor in hawaii education which is not known the world over for excellence uh, is the University of Hawaii. Uh, and my recollection is uh, we give the university, gee, we give the university a lot of money, a lot of money. Could it be even more than DOE? Um, and what about the decision process there? Is that any better or is it worse? What is it like? How does it compare? Well, uh, there are a lot of similarities. Um, you have a uh, an elected or appointed with confirmation committee that is at the top of it, the Board of Regents. And and you have a, a chief executive, president of the university, um, and, and lots of bureaucracy under it. But I don't think it's I don't think it's quite as bad as the DOE. At least there's more transparency, at least as you know, in, in my experience there is. Well, presumably the, the, the Board of Regents that come from other places, they're not stuck in career patterns uh, that require them to just buy into a program. Um, they they, ha they have a, you know, the opportunity to say no, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, I agree. There's, there's a difference there. Um, but in general, I mean, I guess I would ask you as a matter of policy, um, how important is education to us? How important is it that we provide schools that are comfortable, um, that we provide all of the things um, that that give our kids excellent education? How important is that in the larger picture? In the picture of looking forward, no, I think it's I think it's a very critical thing. Um, uh, we start in the schools to learn to be productive members of society. If we can't, you know, and if we can't do that job right, then how can we expect uh, our our kids to be productive members of society? And can you compare for us the process that you know we have identified and discussed today over air conditioning in the schools of the public schools in DOE as against the private schools? Uh, of which there are several in Hawaii. Well, um, in in the private schools, usually you don't have gov governance by committee. Usually, there's a chief executive, so there are definite lines of accountability, um, and there are competitive pressures because there are more than you know. There's, there's more than one private school, uh, and the uh, and, and a school has to demonstrate its value. Uh, in light of the fact that, uh, you know, parents in Hawaii can send uh, their kids through the public school system and not pay for it. So, yeah, well, they, 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 they write checks to the public school and they are their own control. If they write checks and they see the public school, I'm sorry, they write checks and see the private school throw the money away as here. Um, they're going to say something, and they can they can vote and, with their feet. Yeah, they can pull their kids out, which which is something that that DOE can't do. And one they other thing comes that. to mind is that in in the middle of all that, there's the charter schools. Um, are the do the charter schools fall in you know the public school category here for this kind of discussion? Or uh, yes, uh, yeah, um, charter schools. Uh, employees are all DOE. How about the how about the air conditioner? That I don't know. Hmm. I really wonder. Well, let's let's go back to um, my point over architecture just for a minute. Huh? Um, okay, let's assume that you can build a school that is open 
um, to the trade winds um, in a way that it, it's it's sustainable. And so that if it rains, it's not going to rain into the classroom. Um, and, uh, and and I think any any good environmental architect will tell you that you can do this. Um, and if there are no trades, well, you can still open it up well enough so that it, it, there's refreshing air uh, going into the classroom. And you can do that with residences, I know. We've had many shows about this subject on our architecture show. So it, it, it leads to the whole question of the infrastructure. If you want to provide kids in this state with an enviable environment where they can feel good about their schools, and you mentioned schools that are what? 60, 70, 80, 100 years old in the state, um, isn't it good to, um, you know, refurbish our classroom uh, and include air conditioning or, and or um, open, open air, you know, architecture? Are we doing that? Are we going around and saying, hmm, this one's old. We have to, we have to re redo this one. And well, this one my, my understanding is that we have... <laughs> Uh, backlog upon backlog deferred maintenance, not only at the schools but also uh, at the university and at several other agencies, like you know the legendary problems at the airport. Uh, that's in the Department of Transportation. Yeah, I mean we have we have a deferred maintenance issue. Well, um, uh, a, a deferred redevelopment issue. I mean, probably. I mean, I've seen schools. Looked like they were built in 1900, and uh, they probably were. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like I'm sure if you went to uh, a modern city, um, uh, a well well funded city in the U.S. or Canada or even Asia or Europe, you would find that the, the schools are considered a treasure by the community. They are a statement of the future. They are a statement of of uh, the way the community feels about their children. I, 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 I'm a little concerned that we, that our schools are not a pretty, not a pretty statement about how we feel about our children. No, I think it's a valid concern. Yeah. But then all that is a, is a, uh, again, it goes back down to uh, getting our priorities right, getting our priorities reflected into our budgeting and not budget, not bypassing or budgeting with special funds and other uh, other artifacts like that. I mean, we have to have a line of accountability between the people uh, who who our government is supposed to serve and the services that are that our government in fact provides. Well said, Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. A uh, very important discussion. I hope we can carry it forward. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.